Good evening. Welcome to Voice in the Wilderness Ministries. Thank you all for being here. Tonight, I'd like to further talk about Jesus Christ, which I love to do. Tonight's title is going to be Jesus Christ as I Am. The relationship of the deification of Jesus Christ and the humanity of Jesus Christ blended together into one is often a very polarizing uh, subject in religious circles and in conversations. There are very few things that divide the Christian church any more than Christ and his relationship to God. as he the Son of God? Is he God? There's been bannered about Trinitarian oneness. He is all of that because of the way he talks. In other words, he is all that he ever says in his word. I want you to turn with me to the scripture in John chapter 8, verse 58, actually verse 57, in a discourse that would eventually probably seal his fate with his crucifixion in the hearts of the Pharisees and the Sadducees who were looking for a reason for him to find it. In verse 57, <clears throat> verse 56, he says, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and thou hast seen Abraham. And Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. And they took up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we assemble our hearts together to one more time glean from your word, as we reach into the deeper aspects of the heart of God, the nature and character of the eternal dynamic of Jesus Christ and his relationship to you as his son and the future king of the world, we simply ask that your spirit fill our hearts with this revelation and with the capacity to speak this boldly into a world that finds God's in everything and everyone as the true one seeks from the voice of heaven to call all to his son, Jesus Christ. Amen and am. Amen. I am. It is the Greek word, it is the Koinine Greek word, ego, emi. It is a present tense form of the Hebrew word Yahweh, Y-H-W-H. -H. It, it is the present tense form of the Exodus 3.14 declaration of the name of God. It suggests timeless existence with no point of beginning at all and pre-existence. Jesus Christ presents himself at one with the Almighty 12 times in the book of John. Jesus Christ quotes himself as I am 23 times in scripture. In John 8, 58, it says, I am that I am. In John chapter 1, verse 4, we see the eternal aspect of his son. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Or, excuse me, the Word was with God and the Word is God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him and without Him was not anything made that was made. And Him was life and the life was the light of men. He was preexistent. In John 8, 24, it says, I therefore say unto you, you shall die in your sins, for you believe not that I am He. You shall die in your sins. We scroll down to verses 28 and 29. And then Jesus said unto them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you shall know that I am He, and that I do nothing of myself. But as the Father hath taught me, I speak these things, and He that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I always do the things that please Him. In John chapter 10, verses 25, 10 through 25. Let me stop here for just a minute. 100% of the time when someone asks me where to start to read the scriptures, I have never said in the book of Genesis, and I never will. Every new believer needs to introduce himself to God through the book of John. It is the greatest and most personal dissertation and diatribe of the character and the personal relationship God seeks with mankind through his son. The synoptic gospels have wonderful treasures of gold, but there is nothing as personal as the book of John as God reaches into the heart of man to examine his own heart. If you are looking for a way to study the scriptures, it should always begin with the book of John because in the book of John, more than any other book, is the heart of God towards man revealed through the nature and the character of his son who died and was resurrected 
and sits at his right hand right now. In John chapter 10, verses 25, Jesus answered, I told you and you have believed not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. John 17, verse 5. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self with the glory which I had before the world was. In John 17, verse 24. Father, I will that thou also whom thou hast given with me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou hast loved me before the foundation of the world. Colossians 1, 17. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. In Colossians 2, verses 9, verse 9, the Bible says, For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Excuse me. In Ephesians 3, 15, the Bible says, Of whom the whole family of heaven and earth is named. In Hebrews 13, verse 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. He says it again. When he says, I am he, that is the Greek word, the Koinine Greek word, eno, emi, Christios, mesis. John 4, 25 through 26, the woman saith unto him, I know that when Messiah comes, who is the Christ? He, when he has come, he will tell us all things. And Jesus answered and said, eno, emi, Christos, mesis. I am he. John 8, 24, John 8, 24, I said therefore unto you that you shall not die in your sins, for you believe not that I am he, but you shall, because you, for you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sins. John chapter 8, verses 28 through 29. Then said Jesus unto them, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you shall know that I am Eno, Emi, Christos, Messias, I am he. And I, that I do nothing of myself. But as the Father hath taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone. For I always do the things that please him. In John 13, verses 19 through 20. Now I tell you before it comes, that when it has come to pass, you may believe that I am Eno, Emi, Christos, Messias. I am he. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receives whosoever I sent receives me, and he that receives him that sent me. John, Matthew 16, verse 20. Then Jesus charged his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Matthew 20, verse 15. It is not lawful for me to do with what I will on my own in thine eye evil, because I am good. The next is, I am the bread of life. Ego, imai, ohos, ortos, zois. John 6, verse 35. And Jesus saith, I am in him, I am the bread of life. He that cometh unto me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. And I want to stop and make a point here. All of the aspects with which he identifies himself with are literally what keeps people alive. Bread. Water, air, God, the shepherds. All of these terms talk about a fulfilled life with God as the same way in a physical life. Air, water, food, God himself, the shepherd, the light of the world. All of these terms deal with one or more aspects that are necessary to have life. And ultimately, the shedding of his blood is the life itself. It is what recreates spiritual life from spiritual death. So every part of him was life. And that life was identified as light. And when John said, and the light shined in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. It is the light of God to this world. But men rejected that light in John chapter 3. And this is the condemnation. Verse 17, well, wait a minute. He that, let me go up to verse 17 of John chapter 3. He that believeth on him, or excuse me, 18. He that believeth on him 
hath, is, not, is not condemned. But he that believeth not in him is condemned already because he believeth not in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world, but men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. He that doeth evil hates the light and is not going to come to the light because his deeds will receive correction. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light that his deeds are manifest that they are wrought in God. In Ephesians 5, it says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them, for it is a shame to even speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are manifest by the light. For what doth manifest is light. In other words, light manifests the deeds of darkness and provides the light to escape from the darkness with which one person or any people find themselves in. If they will just go to the light, then they will be redeemed from their darkness by the blood of Jesus Christ. John chapter 6, verse 35. He said, and Jesus said unto him, Ego, ima, o haros, autos zoes, I am the bread of life. He that come to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. In John chapter 6, verses 47 through 51, the Bible says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which comes down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give him is of my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. Let me stop for a moment here. Recently, President Trump nominated a Christian, a wonderful Christian lady for the Supreme Court. Almost immediately, there was stuff running around social media about cannibalism. Let me clear this up. What they're pointing to is a doctrine called transubstantiation, which is part of the Catholic doctrine. And when you take communion or you deal with the Eucharist and you take of the bread and of the wine, they believe that you are drinking the actual, or you are actually eating the body of Jesus and the blood, of, and drinking the real blood of Jesus. This cannibalistic spiritual concept is revolting to most people. The Protestant definition of this is that they are symbolic of the bread and the blood of Jesus as he did it at the Passover dinner in remembrance of his death and the blood he gave for us. This sickening display of cheap journalism, using that to make this woman appear to be something that she's not, is another display of the misuse of the perception of how God's word is preached. We do not identify with transubstantiation and neither does that young woman that's trying for the Supreme Court. And it has nothing to do with her qualifications as a judge in hearing the matters of law of the laws of men. Her qualifications are based on her education and her capacity to discern that which is good and right as it reads in the laws of man and the laws of God. And that is a cheap way to try to undermine the call of God upon her life. If you don't want her there, that's one thing. But don't do it that way. John chapter 7, verse 39, or John chapter, excuse me, chapter 4, uh, 4 verse 13 and 15, 14. Jesus said, whoever shall drink of this water shall rise again, and whosoever of this, uh, this shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing unto everlasting life. John 7, 37 through 39. In the last and the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. For he that believeth on me, as the scripture said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spoke he of the Spirit, which they believe on him should receive the Holy Ghost, who was not yet given, for Jesus Christ was not yet glorified. Next you hear the saying, I am the light of the world. Ego, emi, false cosmo. John chapter 9, verse 5. As long as I am in the world, ego, emi, false cosmo, I am the light of the world. In John chapter 1, verse 4 and 5, the Bible says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. That light represents the life of God and the regeneration. And the light shined in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. 
In 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, the Bible says the true light, excuse me, John chapter 1, verse 9, he says that was the true light, meaning Christ, that lights every man that comes into the world. In John 1, 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glories of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. In John chapter 3, verse 19, and this is the condemnation that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. In the Gospel of John, chapter 35 and 36, that Jesus said unto him, Yet a little while, and the light is with you. Walk while you have that light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knows not where he goes. While you have that light, believe in that light, that you may be the children of light. Listen, let me say that again. Yet a little while, and the light is with you. Walk while you have this light lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness know not where he goes. While you have that light, believe in the light that you may be the children of light. In verse 46 of the same chapter, he says, I am come as a light into the world that whosoever believes in me shall not walk in darkness. In Luke 2, verse 32, the Bible says, and a light unto the Gentiles in the glory of thy people Israel. You see, God sent his son for the Gentiles as well as the Jews. Amen, Walls. He sent him for you. And if you're not Jewish, that could be a problem if he didn't do that. In Acts 13, verse 47, For so the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee a light to the Gentiles, that thou should just be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. In Acts 26, verse 23, the Bible says that Christ should suffer, and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and show light to the people and to the Gentiles. In, in Isaiah, uh, this was spoken of, by Isaiah in chapter 9, verse 2 of Isaiah. The people that have walked in darkness have seen a great light. And they that have walked in the land of the shadow of death upon him hath the light shined. Next, I am the door. The coinine ego, emi, he thyra. In John chapter 10, verses 7 through 9. Then Jesus saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go out and find pasture. Let me share something with you just a moment. This week, I have found no less than five dissertations on social media, particularly on YouTube, concerning that we are not supposed to preach about salvation and that we're not supposed to send the gospel to the world but using kingdom now dominion, we are to build empires unto ourselves. Let me share something with you. Just because somebody's got a big ministry and just because somebody appears to say all the right things, eventually their true nature will come out. There is nothing more blasphemous to Jesus Christ than spouting those words. And there's no excuse for it. And a gullible generation is allowing themselves to be sent to hell by replacement theology. And it's still the truth. If, we, if, we're not, if he did not come to save us from our sins, there is no reason to even do this. I got a man sitting here who worked long hours in front of a, behind this camera who believes in what we say. What does it mean to him if I was to get in front of this camera and say that in front of him? His hope is gone. And the only thing they're trying to do is build a crowd and they're trying to outsmart and side door the truth. There is no excuse for this. Not one. I'm not naming names. I don't care who likes this or dislikes it. It is the gospel of salvation. It is to be preached into all the world. The scripture says in Romans 1.16, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to the Jew first and to the Gentile. I am not ashamed of this. The scripture says, if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. The gospel of salvation is the primary purpose of Jesus Christ coming, dying, and resurrected and is the purpose of the Holy Spirit. Do not allow any sly words of men's wisdom confuse you because they are wrong. And eternity will bear this out. If they do not preach the gospel, I don't care if they're the largest church in this country. I am tired of pastors and ministers and people getting in front of television and making every excuse for men. 
If you die and you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are going to hell. Amen, Walls. And I am sure since I have started preaching this, I have lost many, many people who would like me to come preach for them. So be it. So be it. I will go to the streets and the byways first before I'll compromise the truth to please mankind. This revisionist, revival, revisionist, syncretic relativism that permeates the Christian faith has got to stop because you serve a literal God and a literal son and he's watching. And that's part of the reason we're going through the things that we're going through. And you can forget about repentance or revival without repentance if there's no such thing. God's, heart, people, God's people's hearts have to understand, we messed up. We need to repent. We need to give our hearts back to God completely for this to happen. Because why would the world take you seriously if you're not taking yourself seriously? We've allowed far too many things go on for far too long, and he's watching. So you better let your message be something that pleases him. Yes, God loves your worship. Yes, God loves great worship and praise. But if you back that up with a humanistic message, you just wasted your time. It's, about, it's become about entertainment and a sideshow. And it's about keeping up with the Joneses and it's a competition. It's a marketing competition. I can tell you, the only what, it is, this is out of the Bible itself. Only a remnant's going to be there. The scripture says, enter in at the straight gate. There is no broad way to this. I've preached and I've hammered it enough. You ought to be able to quote it when I say it. The scripture says, not everyone that calls me Lord, Lord is going to get into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. And these fads and trends and new things and replacement theologies, you better be careful. If it does not please God, does not glorify Christ, and is not manifested of the Holy Spirit through the Word of God, you could have a problem with it in eternity. Enough of that. I am the door. The reason he says he's the door is that any man that comes in any other way is a thief and a robber. That means, Jesus Christ said in Matthew 24, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall say, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. And many false prophets and shall false Christ and false prophets shall arise and do great signs and wonders insomuch they shall deceive the very elect. Make sure that you make your election sure. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Let a man examine himself to see if his heart is right with God. That's all in the scriptures as well too. John chapter 10, verses 7 and 9. Jesus saith them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear him. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. <clears throat> Ezekiel 34, 14, the Bible says, I will feed them in good pasture, and upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. John chapter 10, verses 1 through 4. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that enters not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own name and leads them out. And when he has put forth his own sheep, he goes before him, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. In the same chapter in verses 7 through 10, the Bible says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh but not for to steal, steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. Romans 5 verse 21, That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Ephesians 2, verse 18, for through, for through we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Hebrews 9, verse 8, the Holy Ghost also signifying that the way to the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while the first tabernacle was yet still standing. Hebrews 10, 20, 
10, 19 through 20. Having their bold, therefore boldness to enter into the whole east by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he hath consecrated, uh, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Matthew 28, 11, verse 28, the great call to all the lost and hopeless, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. 1 Timothy 2, verse 5, there is one mediator between God and man, the man, Jesus Christ. Let me skip over a little bit here because I've covered the good shepherd. Now the most controversial, I am the Son of God. It is ego, emi, ho, heois, theo, in Koinine Greek, the declaration. Ego, emi, ho, heois, theo, I am the Son of God. John 10, 36, say of him whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemy because I said I am the Son of God. See, there's a lot of people who said Jesus never said he was the Son of God, and there it is. John 10, 36, he did say he was the Son of God. That means he has a Father. That means he's a Son. That means he is the Son of God. In John chapter 10, verse 30, it says, I and my Father are one. But Jesus answered and said, My father worketh thereunto, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only broke the Sabbath, but he said that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Then Jesus said unto him, The son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the father do. For what things soever he does, these also do the son likewise. John chapter 9, verses 35 through 37. Jesus heard they had cast him out, and when he had found him, he said unto them, Do you believe on the Son of God? And he answered, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe in him? And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talks to you. In John chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal, everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to destroy the world, but the world through him might be saved. The simplest of messages has become so complicated. John chapter 5, verses 30 and 31. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. In John chapter 5, verses 36 through 37. But I have a greater witness than that of John the Baptist. For the works that the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do, bear witness of me that the Father hath sent me. And the Father himself which sent me hath borne witness of me. You have not heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. John 6, verses 36 through 40. Do you understand that this is how you learn who Jesus Christ is? His words, his purpose, and God's plan is his Father in him. John 6, verses 36 through 40. But I say unto you that you have also seen and believe not. All that the Father hath given me shall come to me. And he that comes to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will that sent me, that all which he hath given to me I should lose nothing, but should raise it again on the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which sees the Son and believes on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him on the last day. John 6 verse 57, As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father. John 17, verses 4 and 5. I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work that thou hast given me to do. And now, Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had before the world was. In John 17, verse 8. For I have given unto them the words which thou hast given me, and they have received them, and have surely known that I came out from thee, and they believe that thou hast sent me. Verse 18 of the same chapter. And thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I sent them into the world. Verse 21, that they may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they may also be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. In John chapter, in John chapter 20, verses 28 and in verse 31, that they may be as one, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they may also be one of us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Again, it is saying it again for emphasis. In John chapter 20, excuse me, I may have skipped, I may have jumped up one there. 
John chapter 20, verses 28 and verse 31. And Thomas answered and said, My Lord and my God, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing that you may have life through his name. Romans chapter 1, verse 4, the Bible says, And declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection of the dead. Let me move along. Number The next one, I am the resurrection and the life. Ego, imai, he, anatasis, kai, he, zoe. Ego, imai, he, anastias, kai, he, zoe. I am the resurrection and the life, life itself. John chapter 11, verses 25 through 26. Jesus saith unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever believeth on me shall never see death. In John chapter 1, verse 4, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. John 3, 16, I've quoted. John 5, 21, I've quoted. John 5, 26, for as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given the Son to have life in himself. John 6, 39, and this is the Father's will which hath sent me, uh, that all which have given me shall lose nothing, and he shall raise it up again on the last day. Let me try to finish up here as best I can. Next, I am a teacher and Lord. Ego imai, diaskialos, kai kerios. John 13, verse 13. You call me rabbi and Lord, and you say, well, for so that I am. Matthew 28, verse 30. Teaching them to observe whatsoever I have commanded you. John eleven twenty eight. 28. The rabbi has come, and he calls for you. Ephesians 6, 9. And ye masters do the same things unto them, forbearing, threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven, neither is their respective person, forbearing, threatening, knowing that your master who is in heaven, neither is their respective persons with him. Lastly, I think this is lastly, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I say that I've come to this point, I cannot quit until I finish with this. It is the Greek word, ego, imai, he, holdo, he, alithia, kahe, zoe. John 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. John 1.14, In him was life, and the life was light of, the light of men. There are a number of other verses. Ultimately, uh, I could go to the true vine, and there's probably a couple others, but I want to close it with here for now. The bottom line is there is no more polarizing man that has ever walked the face of the earth than Jesus Christ. There is no man that has elicited more opinions, more love, more hatred, more divisiveness. And the sword that he sent, that he would put people at odds against each other by the simplicity of his message. If I had to leave this earth one day, tonight, I would appeal to you that there is no other way to God but Jesus Christ. There is no other way to even remotely approach the nature of God separate from Jesus Christ. The love of God has flown around narratives and oratories in all types of human endeavors. Yes, God does love you. And God displays that love to you through the sacrifice of His Son. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And when that day comes when all of us leave this world, we will fall on the sword of the mercy of a God who sent his son to die for us, that we may live in eternity with him as he made us in the first place before we fell into sin. You have to understand there's a very real devil out there. And the devil's not going to come to you in the way you think he will. And he is not the devil that television presents. He is very subtle. He is very cunning. He is very real in his deception. And when he speaks, he seems like he's telling the truth. But there's always an element of truth. This is the month of Halloween. And this country goes stark raving nuts over everything evil. They worship it. They honor it. They dress up like them. And they serve them. They glorify the devil like, anyone I've, like no one I've ever seen. And they think it's all right but it's not. I strongly suggest that in a world that has toppled over in this last year, where all things we thought were important turned out to be not nearly, 
that you turn your hearts back to God and to his son Jesus Christ as the emphasis of everything that we do. Yes, there are other parts of the Bible that need to be proclaimed. But in a lost and dying nation, the emphasis of everything we say and do should come through the lens of Jesus Christ. Far too many men have exalted their wisdom and their knowledge and their imaginations to a place of greatness only to be toppled by an angry God. I'm going to stick with Jesus Christ as the way to God. I pray that you do as well. Would you pray with me, Father, in the name of Jesus? Lord, as we come tonight during Halloween season, never more in any part in history has the gospel needed to be preached. I want to be like the Apostle Paul. I, we should have a zeal for the things of Christ. Christ should be the centerpiece of everything that we do. Everything we say, everything we are. I'm going to serve Jesus Christ. You, can, you folks can do what you want to do. You can live any way you want. But I'm reminded of the words of Joshua as he bid farewell in his leadership role. Joshua chapter 24, verses 13 through 15. For I gave you a land for which you labored not, and a city which you did not build wherein you dwell. And vineyards and olive yards which you didn't plant do you eat. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him with all sincerity and truth. And put away the gods of your fathers which were on the other side of the flood. And serve ye the Lord. For if it seem evil for you to serve the Lord, then choose this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now dwell. But as for me and my house... We're going to serve the Lord. I pray that the Lord is the centerpiece of everything that you do. And I pray that if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if he came tonight and turned the clock off on your life, would you be ready? If he came and called us all home in the glorious celestial trump of God, when the Son of God lowers himself from heaven on a cloud, and shouts with the voice of the archangel, and the trump of God shall sound, and the dead shall rise. Will you be caught up in the clouds with them to meet the Lord in the air? Or will you be left behind? Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee an understanding in everything. Good night and God bless. <laughs>